Morning from the uh, metalworking side of the shop from uh, Airframe Fixers uh, Compound here, we'll call it that. Um, like I mentioned, uh, I built built the shed, so I got all my fertilizer and chemistries pretty much out in uh, in a shed related to my lawn care operation, which I'm happy to say is wrapping up for the year. I've got a handful of stuff left to do, some dormant seeding, a little bit of grub control, a little bit of uh, spot weed control too. So the skid sprayer is going to come out of my truck soon. Uh, I hope uh, I hope by Monday and I can break it down and clean it up. I can uh, actually I, I plan to make a new frame for it something much lighter and um, a little bit more compact um, Anyway, just uh, some updates over the course of the year Never mind all that stuff. That's basically the amount of uh, Well a fraction of the amount of Delta guard to go through a couple bottles left to temperate in there There's some other bottles in there as final sad, but that's uh those are some of my core products. I just have them in the shop here because I'm doing a big rearrange in the other one. So that sheet metal shear, I ended up getting that for next to nothing. All I had to do was fix some chainsaws for a tree company. And uh, they wanted to move it along and I happened to want a sheet metal shear, so it worked out in the end. Uh, there's a spool off my old um, Hannah reel. I actually have two of these kicking around, so always good to have spares. That's kind of my motto. Um, you know, two is one and one is none. And I think that's really important if you're a solo landscape pesticide tree guy that you have multiples. And I'm, I'm going to say I'm pretty proud that I have almost zero uh, mechanical um, days where I, I can't operate because I can't, um, you know, get a piece of equipment working. So anyway, it's really important to me that, you know, I only have so many days off per week to do this. Uh, some of you guys may know I'm, I'm also a, an airline employee, so I, I, I do go to the airport. I don't know. This year it's been about one or two times a week. So let's uh, knock on wood and hopefully that uh, stays the same. But otherwise, uh, I can't afford downtime. So that that spool right here, um, it, it uh, corroded through and it started blowing herbicide out at one of the last spray job of the day at one place. So I just came home and swapped out for another spool. And I have the replacement part here. Uh, I would have made that, but not knowing the dimensions exactly. I was like, you know what, just order it and then swap it out in the fall and then I can copy it and I can make a new one if I see fit. A uh, new Echo Backpack Sprayer, this is the Jack Doe style. I love how these store and um, I'm gonna give this a whirl. I have two Jack Toes, but they've been uh, uh, giving me fits. I think a guy can only realistically expect one year out of these if you're gonna use some of the harder, uh, harder chemistries on seals. Uh, Fiesta herbicide with surfactants and whatnot can be hard on seals. Um, hydroxyethylene, diamine, triacetic acid, and also some of the uh, horticultural vinegars, like 20% acetic acid is really hard on seals. So I don't expect these things to last very long, but initial impressions are like the wands more substantial than on the Jack Doe. It's got a trigger lock off as well as a trigger lock on. Um, this, this all looks just much more robust. I've broken a couple of handles on the Jack Doe. I like the carrying lid and I like the uh, upright piston style and it, the reason being is it just stores really well in the back of the truck. So we'll give that a try. I might order the other one. I keep one for selective and the other one for non-selective herbicides. And uh, yeah, we'll give those a try. I've had Solo, I've had Jack Toe and now this Echo one, which, you know, I think one could say is probably even just made by Jack Toe. All right, that's the end of that. Um, new gear over here, actually lots of new gear. And the reason being is if you don't spend your money uh, on certain a certain capital budget every year, you're just gonna give it to the federal government in the form of tax. So an important thing to do for me is, is to make sure the old stuff either gets given away, uh, discarded, given to my wife, and then she might sell it locally. But uh, it's when it's completely amortized, then uh, it makes sense in my situation to acquire new equipment so you don't pay income tax when you don't need to. I took advantage of the uh, fleet discount this year. I ordered this in. Um, the reason why I wanted to order it is to ensure I didn't get a leftover version of the 8010 or the 9010, which apparently uh, had some issues with the flex pipe and the uh, engine uh, had some issues right out of the gate. That handle is going to take a little bit of while getting used to. I'm probably the only person in the world that enjoyed the uh, Husky 570 and 580 BTS handles. We're, we're actually off to the side. I might modify that to be like that. I really like that. I find that if you if you hold hold the handle sideways, 
it, it matches the movement with your elbow and it, it's much more much more ergonomic all right so i ordered the the shindawa in summary just to ensure that they weren't going to sell me the uh 810 echo they had sitting on the shelf there uh echo pulse saw that's my second one i had a ppt 280 um for the last five years i did use it i made a lot of money with it but it was one of those tools where like well do i need this i got lots of telescoping uh, manual pole saws and uh, the snap together Marvin or Jameson ones uh, for Arbor Culture. So I was like, well, I can just get away with using those. It turns out I can't. So uh, I picked up another pole saw and uh, I stuck with the D handle. They had a, a regular handle in stock, but I was like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm used to the D handle. We'll stick with that. Lots of confidence in that engine there. Same one as my Echo Blower. And um, last item, I picked up this related to lawn care, pest control, and tree work. Um, so, in summary, let's let's do a little diversion here. I do 150 lawns. A bulk of those are, um, um, you know, pest control too. So rodents, ants, ticks, spiders, mosquitoes. I have a mosquito license as well. So I have three pesticide licenses. And in the fall, I focus on tree work when I don't do any of that. And this is all with a full-time airline job too, which is not full-time whatsoever but anyway i've been doing tree work for you know 10 years out here i climb and um, i'm getting back into it because uh I've, I've just basically have enough clients now that i'm always going to get calls for trees and if i can defer it all to the fall i can i can make it work financially because i just can't afford to give up uh any kind of lawn care pest control activities in the in season uh to handle tree work that can be done in the fall besides the bulk of it is pruning so that's 2511t Everybody knows about those. What's going to be a little bit different on this one than everybody else's is that's a steel bar, 3 8 low profile with a 9 tooth nose sprocket because I don't want to give up the ability to bore cut. And on top of that, it's a 0.43 um, chain driver width. And apparently that's going to give you the best cutting combo. The narrow kerf and on top of that importantly it's 44 drive lengths so the stock bar was 45 drive lengths and apparently those chains chatter quite a bit so the reason why i wanted the 44 is because i can go to the steel dealer and get steel chain not, that's not steel chain right there <clears throat> but it's uh, a 3 8 low profile narrow kerf and when somebody makes a full chisel version of that then a lot of people will be pretty happy Anyways, I had to modify that bar. What I had to do was overlay the echo bar on top of it, match up the tail end radius, and then uh, I chucked it up in the in one of these vices and then uh, drilled the holes, used a gauge pin to find the holes. And then I, what I ended up doing was I ended up drilling down between the rails uh, to cut down into where those those holes protrude. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll modify one and then uh, put a video on YouTube how you can make a steel bar work on an Echo uh, A041 mount. Anyway, it oils just fine. Um, so that gives me the option to uh, buy steel chain locally, which is common to 44 drive lengths. And the other benefit too, is that takes a 44 drive length chain, but the stock saw takes a 45 drive length chain. So that's uh, about it about this. Actually, the other thing, so in uh, Kanakistan, we'll look at that serial number there. Uh, 801 that serial number I looked up in the IPL it's got a muffler that ends with uh, 861 of the last three digits in the part number and that denotes a non catalytic muffler so I'll be making a a deflector or an exhaust pipe to mount right there and we'll brazer TIG weld that on and uh, that'll be my new climbing saw so having gone from my first climbing saw was a 355T and then I had about five or six 200 T's that I was just, you know, working through rebuilding, cli um, climbing with, and then selling off because the market demand was still pretty high for those. And I think it was 20, <clears throat> 2015, 2016, it was still pretty high. They're still desirable, but you can do a lot with this saw. Uh, and then I had a 150 T, I had a 361 P, which uh, I sold on along to a guy that uh, he wanted it more than I did. And I picked up that uh, 201 rear handle uh, this spring as well. So I'm back into a four chainsaw plan. Anyway, uh, and then I had a, a 201 top handle uh, at one point for a short while. Um, buddy was looking for one. I managed to find one. 
did all the standard mods to it, the timing advance, the carb delimit, and the muffler mod. And uh, that was a good saw too, um, but just, you know, overkill for the type of climbing and pruning and light removal work I do for my existing clients. Tree work's not something I really promote. It's something that I fit in um, at the end of the season and I, I've got all this teed up. So I'm not out quoting and thing about tree work is you find out you're the you find out you're the lowest quote quoter when you get the job. So I'd rather just, you know, tell my regular clients I'm available in the fall and then get that all teed up. So anyway, there's my new top handle. Maybe we'll do a video of that cutting at some point. Um, yeah. So just another guy on the internet making a video about the stuff he bought. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching.